Oh, hi, this is Balaj, the author of the Breadboard Simulator package. And in this video, I will show you how to use it for your lab experiment. There are two programs included in this package. The first is a simple interactive plot where you can tweak uh, the values of the resistor, the inductor and the capacitor to see how the resonance curve changes. You can also see a phase plot, which is included in the script. The second is the breadboard simulator itself, which comes with four windows. The first is the virtual breadboard, the second is a virtual oscilloscope, and there's also a signal generator and the multimeter screen. So we will start with the breadboard window. Here, first you will have to enter your student number. This is necessary because this will be used as a seed value for all random values in this program. As you can see on the screen, there's a breadboard, a multimeter, an oscilloscope and a signal generator. Currently, this is the only power supply. Currently, only this output of the signal generator works. If I move my mouse over it, you can see a purple dot, which means that it is a BNC connector. I can connect any two uh, BNC connectors with the coax cable, first by moving the mouse over the first one, double clicking it, and then double clicking on the other uh, BNC connector. Now there's a coax cable going from the signal generator to the oscilloscope. We can see this by turning on the oscilloscope. So I press run and there you go, we can see a sine wave. I can change the frequency of the sine wave over here in the signal generator window with the coarse and fine tuners or by entering a value with the keyboard. So I'm going to set this to 500 Hertz. I can also set a trigger here. So if I set the trigger to channel one, then we can see a nice steady signal. On the oscilloscope screen, I can also set uh, voltage offset and time offset as well as uh, time division so let's zoom in a bit and voltage divisions this is too much sorry let's go 400 millivolts there you go Okay. On the signal generator, I can also set a DC offset, which moves the signal up. Okay, now since we had the uh, uh, trigger where you set the zero volts, it, uh, the trigger is not working anymore. But if I set the trigger level to, let's say, one volt, then uh, the trigger works. So set the offset. So we can see the fourth signal. I can also change the amplitude. By this knob or use this minus 20 dB switch. Okay. On the signal generator, I can also set the waveform, which can be a sine wave a square wave, triangle wave, or so too. Probably you noticed that on the oscilloscope window, now I can see this ready uh, label, which means that the simulation has completed. But if I change any value here on the signal generator, or if I change the, the divisions here, so for example, I go up to one millisecond, you can see 
that it takes some time to compute uh, the, to actually to simulate uh, the, the circuit and once it's ready it will be updated on the oscilloscope screen I can also save uh, whatever you can see on the oscilloscope to a CSV file by clicking this button this is acquisition and of course you can open it uh, in Excel or any other program okay and one more thing while the oscilloscope is running you can see I cannot update the, the breadboard screen but once it's stopped I'm free to change anything Okay, now I will show you the multimeter. So first I disconnect the oscilloscope by double clicking on one end of this cable. So here. Currently you can only measure voltage and not current by using these two inputs. So I will connect the signal generator to the multimeter. So if I double click on this, then it's highlighted with purple. If I try to connect it with the multimeter, nothing happens because here you can see a blue dot instead of a purple one, which means that in this pin you can only connect jump wires and not coax cables with PNC connectors. So we will use crocodile clips to connect the multimeter so I can connect one end with the signal generator and I can connect the other end to the multimeter itself so now it's all wired up and if I start the simulation and turn on the multimeter you can see the RMS voltage of this signal. Maybe it can help to, to see the signal itself on the screen. So I disconnected the crocodile clips and I will add a T connector, which makes it possible to split the signal. So one end will go into the oscilloscope, the other will go to the multimeter Okay, run the simulation and we've got the signal on the screen and the voltage on the multimeter and if I change the amplitude of course the voltage changes okay so now you are familiar with all, all parts of this software so we will wire up a simple RC circuit so I'll remove everything to start from scratch I will add a new register and the new capacitor we'll rotate these by the way I, I'm right clicking on it that that's how you can rotate and, and remove components and also this is nothing else but a chromium window so if I press control and use the middle mouse button to zoom in and zoom out so if it appears uh, too small for you you can zoom in so let's fire up the circuit we will need some power source so I will add crocodile clips and uh, that will be connected to the power strips of the breadboard so now this will go here this will go here 
and then I connect up uh, the register. By the way, you you can't uh, just connect this end to this end. So if I try this, nothing happens. So if you are trying to wire up resistors, inductors, and capacitors, you have to use the breadboard. It's okay. So I will connect it back. Oops. oops. Okay, it's connected and this will go to the ground and I will connect uh, this capacitor in series so this leg goes here let's see the other leg goes to the power rail okay and the only thing missing is uh, some measurement. So we want to measure the voltage on the capacitor. So I will add another pair of crocodile clips, which I will connect uh, uh, to the, the two sides of the capacitor. And this will go into channel 1. And I will also need a trigger, so I will connect uh, the signal generator to X, which will uh, function as a trigger, an external trigger. And one last thing I will need to do is actually set the values of the capacitor and the resistor. So you can do it down here. You can enter any value here and change uh, the tolerance as well. So it's currently 5%. So this will mean that the actual value of the register is a random value within this plus minus 5% tolerance. If you really need to, you can set the tolerance to 0%, but uh, keep in mind that this is unrealistic in real life you will never find the resistor with 0% tolerance. Uh, so I will also set the capacitor that's, that will be 30 nanofarads for this measurement and I think I'm ready to start the simulation. I will also set uh, the waveform to square wave. Okay, let's see. And there you go, on channel one. Uh, okay, I, I will set zero DC offset, sorry. So you can see on channel one, the capacitor charging up and then discharging. Okay, let's zoom in a little. Oops, uh, that was alright. I I meant to zoom in on the time axis. Okay. And, um, okay, trigger is on channel one now, but let's set it to external trigger and zero zero volt. Okay, but it would be so nice to see the, the actual driving signal. So instead of the external one. I will connect the signal generator to channel 2 and set the trigger to channel 2 so that we can see in both signals. Oh, and I also need to turn on channel 2 here on the oscilloscope. So now we can see both both signals and if I change this to 500 millivolts then there you go, you can see clearly how how the capacitor charges up uh, due to the, the the voltage changes in the signal. So there you go. This is how you use the breadboard uh, simulator. Uh, have fun with it. If you have any issues, 
technical issues, then please contact me on the email address uh, shown on the screen. But I will only help you with with technical problems like bugs or if you can't start it or have any other issues, but I will not help you with the experiment itself. So there you go. Goodbye.